Enable. Fortinet presents Securing Your Digital Journey in association with CNBC TV18. Hello and welcome to Fortinet presents Securing Your Digital Journey in association with CNBC TV18. I'm your host Gautam Srinivasan and today I will be speaking with industry leaders on connecting business to productivity, flexibility and affordability with an eye on the benefits that software-defined WAN architecture brings to the table. Joining me for this conversation are Amit Singh, Deputy Vice President and Head of IT Infrastructure at Bharti AXA, Amit Chaudhary, Chief Product and Technology Officer at Ecom Express, and Vishak Raman, Vice President of Sales India, SAC and Southeast Asia at Fortinet. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us for this conversation. Let's set the broad strokes first. Vishak, I'll come to you for that because cloud deployments have sort of become the mainstay, but herein comes the balance because there is increasing complexity that comes into play as you try to improve performance for the for users and on the other side there's been an explosion of attack vectors which can be targeted so in this context take us through how a fully integrated sd one architecture can resolve issues and drive sort of positive business outcomes while delivering instant roi benefits and lower tco you said it very right you know it has to drive business outcomes Right. Today, applications are driving the business, right? And it's no more coming from your data centers. It's there in the cloud, and your remote workers are actually working on, uh, working on from remotely as well. So in the game of applications, what you need to prioritize and then give back to your organization is a better user application experience. And that's what software-defined network actually brings in as a value. India has the big last mile problem of multiple connections, right? So how do you bring in resilience within your network? And how do you bring in security as a foundation part of it? It's no more software-defined networks and security separate. Today, it's getting converged. And this is an opportunity for uh, network architects to re-architect and get into the basic guidelines of security as a common denominator and bring in better performance, better application-aware networks, and self-resilient about how the applications can work smoothly with a better ROA back to your organization. All right, a holistic approach to ROI as they state. All right, let's get in the use cases and see what's happening across different sectors. We have big logistics players and big insurance players here to support some of the arguments that you have stated. So let's start with the logistics area and see what is happening because the logistics industry is thriving and that's just the start. So when we look at soft, a software-defined approach to wide area networking, take us through the CapEx and OpEx benefits that are being brought to the table. So at Ecom Express, what we have is a huge network of facilities. When we say facilities, there are delivery centers, 3,000 plus multitude of hubs, sortation centers, and so forth. We need everything to be connected in a very reliable fashion. <clears throat> now, if you look at the world before SD-WAN, which used to be more on MPLS um, you know, fabric, we always used to have concerns around link uptime, link availability, provisioning of these kind of things, where the SLAs are going to be days, um, and we can't live with that. Um, you know, we are bringing up fulfillment centers right across the length and breadth of the country, and we really need to have everything turned around in a smaller tat. Um, SD-WAN gives us that flexibility, that reliance, to make sure I don't have to provision too many links as a backup option. I can actually go through and make sure that I have enough transport options available to me. Now, we call it uh, broadband virtualizer. Now, broadband virtualizes nothing but it's taking the entire transport layer, the network layer, and making it in such a way that we're able to plug in a hotspot, a data card, anything to provide connectivity to our last mile you know, centers. Now, these facilities are across such remote locations at times that it is very difficult to set up the entire you know, link provisioning from a lease line perspective and to make sure that certain vendors are providing us the backup. Um, in order to get out of all of this, I think the software-defined WAN has been a godsend to us. Um, it provides us optimal price performance um, that is required to make sure that we can bring 99.99% scalability at a reduced cost. We don't have to invest too much on the CAPEX side. We can still you know, tune in these things on the go and make sure that the OPEX is not through the roof. We have had almost 2x savings through the entire journey. 
2x savings. All right. I also want to narrow the conversation down to the branch side of things and how things are changing. And maybe, Mr. Singh, we'll get you first, and then, Mr. Chaudhary, your uh, perspective on this. Uh, how can SD WAN support complex branch deployments, in your opinion, with advanced routing and cloud on ramp capabilities while improving the business application experience, the holistic side of things, which uh, Vishak had stated earlier? Yeah, thanks, Gautam. So, uh, we in the hybrid type of environment, right now we are using in the entire uh, Bharti XI ecosystems. Mm -hmm. So, in branches, uh, what we have done, so we have prioritized the entire application traffic. So, it's filled the real time experience for the customer and what they walk in in the branches. So they get the entire feeling of the right resilience. So uh, the previously they are not uh, giving the right set of things uh, when they visited the branches. So we increase the resiliency by moving from traditional van to SD van. So they get the required output in very less time. Also we have prioritized the entire application traffic. So some few of the branches is more prioritized in terms of the sales and few of the branches is more prioritized in terms of the entire operations. Mm. So we have prioritized the entire applications and uh, to get the entire bandwidth allocation for that, uh, uh, the entire customer segments. So that helps a lot and increase the entire self-service option in the customer in the branches as well. All right, a broad application uh, improvement for the customer and, of course, for the employee. Like coming to you for your perspective, Mr. Chaudhary, when, you know, how can an organization, in your opinion, convert SD WAN to SD branch to truly optimize that application experience? So we call it application engineering. I mean, what, what happens is there are certain applications that really need the bandwidth. Um, so we have interactive applications and we have some background applications. Um, so if you figure out what is the right balance and trade-off between these two, what happens is things that really need near real-time sensitivity. In those applications, we have the opportunity in SD-WAN to engineer it in a way that we are able to actually take all of the bandwidth that is required by the applications as a priority. So I can then push all of these other, um, you know, non so much, you know, sensitive or bandwidth hogging applications, which are not so much time sensitive mm -hmm. down so that I can actually make sure that my operations team are able to perform things in the same time frame that they are supposed to. Mm -hmm. So it's a huge, huge benefit for us because we can very quickly turn around the application bandwidth spectrum mm -hmm. um, using these kind of programmable techniques. All right, Vishak, before I come to you for the for asking you about the need for a security driven approach, your response to what uh, both of our guests have stated, especially from the brand side of things, the benefits that uh, SD WAN is bringing to the table. Yeah, yeah I think one, um, the branch is no more, uh, people um, think it as a remote uh, isolated transaction operation. Today, customers pull in there, like what Amit um, from Bhati Access said about it. It is enhancing their performance at the branch level. So you need an application aware, intelligence at the branch level. You need uh, a, a better resilient approach at the branch level from a performance point of view. Right, and making sure that the business at the branch level uh, continues irrespective of a link fluctuation, irrespective of uh, uh, the v dynamicity of the applications going through multiple links, right? Mm -hmm. um, and comes the security part. You don't want to accelerate uh, not just the application, but also a malware. You want to contain the malware containment at a branch level. So you need to have security embedded at your branch level. Mm -hmm. That's the big move of combining security and networking together in a software-defined uh, paradigm at the branch level. All right, expanding on the point that you've stated, considering organizations are moving from this traditional router-centric hub-and-spoke MPLS WAN model to this more software-defined approach uh, where whether any type of user can use it anytime, anywhere. How important is now the need for a sort of a, you know, a security driven networking approach, especially considering some of the points that you've stated? What is the situation right now, especially when it comes to managing complexity and truly unlocking benefits? Yeah, so if you look at um, extending the same branch conversation, how do you make sure your application controls are kept? Whereby you, you, you have very clear defined application layer controls at your branches mm -hmm. and whereby you make sure your security controls are defined and application-aware secure SD-WAN, mm. right? And the second part, from a resilience point of view, how do you make sure that you have a logical links, put it as one logical chunk, mm. and irrespective of any of them getting failed, my 
application resilience goes much higher. And at the same time, I'm able to ward off the malwares, the viruses, the trojans, uh, and your botnets, mitigate it and cut it off at the branch level, mm. whereby my data center and the upstream operations run smoothly, mm. right? And that's a big advantage of combining security at, uh, at the secure SD-WAN and making sure your Wi-Fi at the branch level, right? That's also secure. And how do you make sure that there is no malware which is moving laterally? How do you make sure that your Wi-Fi, your switch have common security framework whereby your network admission control of a user coming into your network, his posture is sec checked, his identity is checked, and it makes sure that uh, he's the right user accessing the right resource. So it is security by design in a secure SD-WAN. We, we mentioned the home office uh, during the conversation earlier, so I want to expand on that because that's the next use case we can look at uh, as enterprises are increasingly embracing a hybrid work experience. So Vishak, I want to get your thoughts first on how SD-WAN can sort of address pain points around reliability, security, and user experience to make it a win-win for both the enterprise and the employee in the context of product. So the first thing comes is your secure identity, whereby you make sure that the real person who is allowed for the corporate resource is the one who is accessing it, right? And the second thing is, uh, as, as Amit spoke about on Bhatia Axa, your cloud applications which needs to ac get access from work from anywhere um, need not come to your data center. They can take a path which is nearest using their dongle or their home Wi-Fi. But how do you make sure that you have a security wrap on, on, on that particular traffic, mm. right? So SD-WAN gives you the flexibility to look at uh, a remote uh, employee who's working from home. And the other piece is if they want to go out into their cloud applications, you make sure that all the checks and balances, whether it is uh, data leak prevention, whether it's cloud access security brokerage, all of the functionalities are built into a client format, and then they go into a, your secure uh, software access service edge, which we call it as a SASE pop, and making sure that an endpoint which is coming and accessing back your corporate resource and your cloud applications follow through a zero trust network access principle, which, is, which we call it as a ZTNA principle, whereby the right user gets the right resource uh, with the best optimized path. And that's, that's what the entire framework of uh, secure SD-WAN combined with zero trust network access per se. All right, expanding this conversation, maybe we could get uh, Mr. Chaudhary and Mr. Singh to comment on it, especially from a home office environment. In the previous segment, we spoke more about the branch, but what about the home office environment? How does a sort of a networking security approach enabled by SD-WAN help you navigate the challenges? Uh, maybe Mr. Chaudhary, we'll start with you and then come to you, Mr. Singh. Sure. So in the same um, spirit, what we're experiencing is every uh, remote employee needs access to the cloud applications. Now everything is moving to the cloud, you need to make sure that the security privileges, just what Vishak talked about, are in place. Um, how do we provide each and every um, you know, edge device that is being used by the employees in a way that they don't have to worry about security? They don't have to worry about anything from a standpoint of what we call the zero trust capabilities. Um, the network has to have everything built in. Uh, making sure that's our prerogative to make sure that we are able to provide that kind of a comfort um, to each and every employee who's logging in from either a branch or outside um, in, within the home premises. And we can provide the same quality of service or quality of experience to each one of them. Mr. Singh, your thoughts on this? So I think for remote structure, as I already told, uh, um, I, this needs required some, uh, you can say it's a more in terms of the entire security. Mm -hmm. So in traditional van, there is, you need to implement everything in the uh, separate thing. So you need to implement v VPNs, you need to implement EDRs and all, so they we. In, uh, in SD-WAN, everything is comes, a wide variety of the projects comes under uh, the entire package. So you can say like that, in the AV filtering, the sandboxing, and everything comes as a package. So you I, ideally you need to install that SD WAN, and then you can provide the entire feature of the securities. It is inbuilt with the product only. Mm -hmm. So you need to no need to install the things as a traditional type of WAN where we are using the VPNs and all. 
All right. Maybe, Vishak, we can get your thoughts on this. Uh, when do you see SD-WAN becoming a critical part of business? The benefits of secure SD-WAN is quite immense. And uh, we benchmarked test reports, which shows the ROI is close to as high as about 300%. So I think it adds immense value. And it's a uh, blessing in disguise because network refreshes are happening. Uh, today, customers are moving away from the traditional MPLS network. And uh, we are seeing uh, broadband-based internet breakouts happening. And with 5G coming in, we're going to see a lot more uh, high bandwidth use cases in, 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 the, in the remotest of their branches out there, right? So extending security back into your 5G because the edge is expanding. So this is the right time to have not SD-WAN separately, security separately, but today this is the right time to converge and bring in the secure SD-WAN and then making sure that you build an intelligent transport layer for the future All right. of your applications. All right, maybe we can get more use cases in about leveraging SD-WAN, especially in a multi-cloud environment because enterprises today have applications residing across crowd. So how do you leverage SD-WAN for optimal multi-cloud performance uh, and integration with SASE to extend uh, the same connectivity and security to workers? Maybe, Mr. Chaudhary, we can have your thoughts on this. I think what we are doing is we are converging a lot of the branch traffic into a certain place so that we can get the... WAF in place, which is the firewall and the, and the right kind of you know, vulnerability tools um, so that we can look at the traffic and make sure that we have more checks and balances. Um, as the technology continues to improvise and the fabric has got more built-in security standards, um, you know, we, will, we will see proliferation of multi-cloud acceptance. Um, at this point, still it's, it's a little bit tricky to make sure that the data leakage doesn't happen when you go through these transitions. When you make sure that whenever you are rolling out any feature or functionality, you have to be 100% sure you know, that, that these kind of vulnerabilities aren't exposed in your system. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that you know, with the progress that has been made in the secure SD-WAN space, you know, we will be able to converge a lot more traffic across different clouds. All right. And which use cases excite you the most? When we look at the flexibility aspect that is afforded to you, looking, say, ahead, what use cases do you think will be de facto? So we are using a lot of digital projects, okay? Mm -hmm. And in the digital products, we are integrating with a lot of third-party solutions where I, am, I need to monitor the entire traffic, not only in terms of my organization, it is in terms of what I am getting from the others. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is something where I need to uh, do the entire traffic segregation in terms of the entire third-party solution where we are using the CASB and all mm -hmm. to get the entire traffic monitor what I am integrating with other SaaS services. Mm -hmm. So that makes the entire use case for that. All right. Maybe, Vishak, we can get your thoughts on this. The use cases that you think are going to be mainstream, which has possibly niche right now, but could be mainstream as people understand more about the power that SD-WAN brings to the table and the flexibility that it affords. Anything that you could share? Yeah, I think uh, the, the biggest use case is what we see is uh, your, your ability to have common security policy across. Yeah. Be it your branch, your remote offices, uh, be it your, um, uh, you know, you know uh, high-powered users out there. You can have one click through a common security policy. Mm. So your visibility goes higher across your digital assets. Even in a 5G use case, you can extend your 5G and then get your visibility out there. Mm. Uh, then, then, then comes your control point, right? How are you going to make sure that granular policies are orchestrated better, right? And the, the third big use case is how do you quickly you can detect your threats? Right? Rather than having multiple consoles of your firewall console separately, your SD-WAN controller separately, or your Wi-Fi controller separately, today uh, a customer can see all of this end-user digital experience on a one single common dashboard. Mm. Right? It's immense benefit to look at his IT assets and apply a common uh, you know, security framework whereby his entire threat detection to remediation SD-WAN brings in the automation capability as well mm. because it's a combined secure SD-WAN and it's not SD-WAN and security separately. All right. As we head to the last leg of the conversation, let me come to Vishak for your final thoughts on the business benefits that a single vendor SASE approach uh, delivers in a SASE solution that extends the convergence of networking and security from the edge 
two remote users seamlessly converging uh, you know uh, cloud delivered sd band and cloud delivered security your thoughts on yeah, that the first and foremost is uh, better performance mm. you are able to give a better user experience because you have the application throttling with you the network the control is given back to you because of the sd band part second is you are reducing the attack surface mm. whereby secure sd band is able to filter out malicious traffic at the edge mm. so you are actually securing the edge by combining security and sd band part the other piece is uh, you are you are improving your staff efficiency mm. so i think staff efficiency improved attack detection and last not but least your ability to save cost mm. um, your total cost of ownership is a very important element and this is what secure sd band <laughs> brings in back to customers as they say show me the money so tco is important maybe we can get some summary thoughts from mr chaudhary and mr singh on the need for a single vendor approach your thoughts flexibility i think is is huge the way businesses have become super agile so we need to respond to the varying demands of the business i think sd band provides you that in a more secure fashion um again integrating a different aspects of network management in a single dashboard that we shark talked about reduces the overheads that the network management team used to have making sure that they are getting more and more productive they don't have to go after solving some of these very repetitive task again and again um and and finally i would also call out there is a there is a lot of uh, you know savings that we have achieved and we continue to work through that all right a ringing endorsement so to say <laughs> mr singh your summary thoughts on this so um, i will divide this into four uh, elements so mm. uh, the one is the improved performance mm. boost security less complexity and definitely the cost one that's all right it. And on that note it's time to conclude this episode of Fortinet presents securing your digital journey in association with CNBC TV18 I'd like to thank all of our panelists for joining in the conversation and sharing their perspectives and experiences on the topic and of course thank you to all of our viewers for tuning in till next time this is your host Gautam Srinivasan signing off have a great day Fortinet presents Securing Your Digital Journey in association with CNBC TV18. Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable.